Tristana. Dan Maliki to call the Oak Stakes for the first time. Dan, and she does look a winner. Most certainly does. Stand out. One of two greys in the race, Tristana. And they're set to go for the Argyle Dome Diamonds Oak Stakes and they're off and racing. One of the best out, Tristana. Gamin got out fairly with Bistro Miss on the inside and Blue Music jumped away well today, but she's going to settle back in the field. And Grand Fun, another New Zealander, is going to lead by the judge the first time. On the inside, Bistro Miss, Tristana to third. A bit of trouble going out of the straight there, but the favourite got around it all right. Gamin got squeezed up a little bit and dropped back through the field. But Grand Fun leads her Moso. Bistro Miss third on the outside, Tristana. Going around them now was Lard Tristana followed by Highfield Queen, Gamine on the fence, Queen Guinevere wide. Then Hasty Departure and Poza Rica, Be My Valentine, Blue Music was next, and then a little kiss. Ogle Tree, two lengths to Sunshine Sally, and a half length away French Gypsy last, about 12 lengths off the lead. La Tristia takes over and slows them right up. They go towards the 1600, La Tristia at a canter, led a half a length to Humoso. Going up on the outside was Be My Valentine to put pressure on this leader, Queen Guinevere to fourth. Then came Grand Fun on the inside of Tristana. Followed by Gamine, next was Bistro Miss. A length or so back to Poza Rica. And they were followed by a Highfield Queen. Hasty Departure, a little kiss, was back on the inside. Blue Music, Sunshine Sally, Deep Oakle Train, a length and a half away, French Gypsy last of all. Going up towards the 1400 metres point and Be My Valentine takes over, leads a length and a half now. La Tristia second, Sunshine Sally going up to make a line of three, Hermoso the centre. A length and a half to Queen Guinevere, followed by Tristana, grand fun on the rails. Then came Poza Rica, Bistro Miss was over on the inside of Highfield Queen, a length and a half to Hasty Departure, a little kiss. Gamine got checked there, back towards the rear end of the field. Was Blue Music and Oakle Train, a length and a half half away French Gypsy last of all as they run up towards the 900 metres point now and Be My Valentine led by a length second placing taken by Sunshine Sally La Tristia third Homoso fourth then Queen Guinevere followed by Tristana she's had every chance Highfield Queen around her grand fun under pressure and they were followed by Poza Rica starting to make a run from Bistro Miss and then Gamine a little kiss hasty departure well back was Oakle Tree Blue Music second last and French Gypsy still last 12 lengths off the lead coming up to the turn in the Oaks they got 600 metres left to go. Be My Valentine in front. La Tristia gets a Dream Rails run. Sunshine Sally out three deep. Then Queen Guinevere. Tristan is going to need some luck. She's three links off the lead. Grand Fun gets a split in the centre. Down towards the 300 metres point. Tristan R getting out of the pack. La Tristia in front. Now Tristan R starting to close and then came Grand Fun. Sunshine Sally. Tristan R moves up on the outside of La Tristia. Tristan R takes the lead from La Tristia. They've kicked away from Oakle Tree running on strongly but Tristan R burst away and She's going to win the Oaks. Tristan R first, a length and a half. Second, La Tristia, a coming Squinella. Third, home Oakle Tree, and then Hermoso, followed by Hasty Departure and French Gypsy. Further back, Queen Guinevere, Gamine and Grand Fun, Sunshine Sally, Blue Music, Bistro Miss, Highfield Queen, and Poza Rica back of the rear with a little kiss. I would say the only time that Jimmy Cassidy was worried about winning the race was when they went past the 800 metres and he got locked in a little bit of a pocket there. But, uh, oh, gee, when she went for an opening and shows what a great racehorse she is, she went through a needle eye opening racing down to about the 400. She got through there and away she went. La Tristia was being hailed as a winner 300 metres out. And the Bart Cummings Quinella, well, how do you beat J.B. Cummings when you get three-year-old fillies? He's like Neville Begg and they just seem to keep producing these, these horses, these fillies. And, and Tristan, I was just too good on the day. She's one of the fillies I think you'll be looking at next year for the uh, the Cox Plate. She ran unplaced in it this year, but gee, next year. And uh, Oakle Tree was a good run on. She ran on well for third, but no, just not the same class as the winner. Peter Donegan's talking to the Cups King. He's done what Lee Friedman did on uh, Tuesday. That's Quinella, the big race. Today, it was the Oaks, Pete. Yes, and uh, Bart's down here now. But a, a muddling run race. Um, any worries at any stage? Well, it's nice to see him run a bit, of, run along a little bit, but uh, I think uh, the winner is probably a bit too classy for them, really. And uh, it was a very, uh, very good win. Nice to train Quinellas in big races, and you've got it here again today. And uh, there's been a bit of that going on this week. Yeah, well, it can't happen often enough for me, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was nice to see the other filly run, uh, run to a place. She's a very promising filly, and I think next year she'll be even better. But before the race, Bruce McAvaney was speculating that Tristan R probably won't uh, get the Melbourne Cup distance maybe next year, but she looks an ideal type for something like the Cox Plate. Well, uh, let's wait till next year, but um, right now she's won everything we've trained her for, with a few a couple of exceptions. You can't uh, win them all, as we all know. But uh, this has been her goal right along, and she's won that, plus the Caulfield Guineas, which she's won. And uh, next year, we'll 
who knows what's in store. We'll see what happens, but I'm sure that uh, she's not ready. She can't win a Melbourne Cup, and uh, she won't run in it. Well, you're going to be busy looking after first and second. Congratulations. Thanks very much. Good. Peter Donegan with the Cups King, Bart Cummings, who's got a great record in this race. He's won five Oaks, second time he's quenilled it. Now, John, let's talk about at the 800 where there were problems for Tristan R. And what's Jimmy Cassidy here? La Tristi is on the inside in front. Now, you can see where Tristan R is. She's got no galloping room at all at the moment. She's a big striding filly. Still no room. Now, this gap will close in a moment. She's going to have to burst her way through. It looks like closing. It has closed. What will Cassidy do? He's got to force his way out. He knows that there's $260,000 on the end of this, and through he goes. Now, the difference between a good horse and an average horse is acceleration. And this is what Tristan R can do. She can accelerate, and then she did. When she had to go through that gap, she was good enough. And away she goes. She just inclined to hang in a little. She showed that again on Saturday that she might do that. Ockle Tree's running on with La Tristia, but this horse is going pretty straight, and she's going very, very fast. She's got a great deal of quality about her. Bart paid $375,000 for this horse at the yearling sales. Bart Cummings has come under a lot of criticism because of how much he spent on yearlings in the past. We all know the problems that Bart's in at the moment. But this filly has won $850,000 in stakes. Bart told us today they've been offered a million dollars for her. I'd say that that's not a bad investment, three hundred and seventy-five dollars on this filly. She's better in the purple. Sir so Tristram's the sire of this horse. Um, also the same sire of Empire Rose, and I think it's about 32 Group 1 winners for Sir Tristram. He's a fantastic sire. This is a great filly, great jockey, great trainer. It was a great Oaks. We'll take a break now, back with correct weight and the presentations after this break.